Welcome to Beer Net Radio. Listen to on every continent except Antarctica. B double E double E R R N E T N E T Beer. Beer Net Radio. Check, check, check. Samsung. Sam's. Samsung. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. Hold on a sec. Can you say something? Mic check. One, two, one, two. All right. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Can Can't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Very good. I uh, sorry, I'm running a little bit late. So t- um, let me admit our guest, and I will and uh, introduce her. So you know, Jordan, we have a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm using a new mic, as you can see, because it's my tr- it's my new travel mic. A handheld, it, I like it. It's handheld because that was the problem. Traveling with the t- tripod and everything is too much. Yeah, it's too much. And when I'm on the road, do I need a tripod? Am I that lazy that I can't just hold a mic in my left hand? I mean, that's what that's what God gave us hands for, is to hold mics. Yeah, I would say the less things you have to be responsible for, the better, too. You are sometimes a little forgetful. Harry. Is that why you had a baby? <laughs> this whole less is more thing. Uh, how's that working out for you, Jordan? <laughs> it's, it's great, man. Has, has, has your life not been complicated at all with the addition of another humanoid no i haven't noticed uh you haven't noticed anything huh no good same same old same old good all right let's uh let's let molly in we always need a good uh we always need a good midwestern milwaukee irish woman on every show harry hi hello molly riley how are you great so good to see you hi jordan hey molly how's it going great great well this is so fun isn't it fun? Welcome to BeerNet Radio, where all your dreams come true. <sighs> Isn't it wonderful? And look, Molly, we have, I have my sidekick Hi. right there. Hi. Um, and she's been alive for so long. And I had to run away with a pack of like chihuahuas. Okay, so uh, Molly and I have been friends for about 25 years, long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met Molly Riley. She was working for Miller Brewing Company at the time. And by the way, Molly Riley has worked everywhere. There's <laughs> nobody with more experience in the beer and beverage industry. She's worked at Miller Brewing Company, Diageo, Constellation, Reyes, uh, I'm sure, uh, among others. And now she's with Double Green, which we'll get to. But um, but Molly really helped me out because I was just starting Beer Business Daily, Jordan. You can imagine what a shit show that was. And uh, I didn't have any contacts, and Molly got me in with Miller, got me in with the people there, and uh, we worked stories. And one of the early stories was, uh, what were those, the, the twins? Oh, the cat fight. Um, the cat tastes fight. great, less filling. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That was cool. Yeah, the Miller Lite tastes great, less filling. And yeah, it was. those were good times. And uh, Molly was there I, for I our- played Spin the Bottle with Tucker Carlson on TV. <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't know that. Yeah. And James Carville. Oh, wow. Yeah. The mouth of the South. And Bill O'Reilly asked me about the Bunny Ranch in an interview, and I didn't know what it was. So I was like, oh. that's surprising to me that he was inappropriate with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad to have you on, Molly. Thank you for coming on. We're an oh, Emerging yeah. Trends podcast, and one of the most pervasive trends is, of course, learning how to cut your emissions and your carbon footprint. And especially where we're in a business where beer is what, Jordan? What is beer? Beer is heavy. That is right. And b- because it's heavy, it and takes delicious. a lot, a lot of delicious. energy. And it's delicious. And, and nourishing. And yes. And, you know, <laughs> and out of all the three tiers, Every part of the tier needs to needs to at least uh, make an effort on this thing. So, Molly, tell us a little bit what you do, what this new law that just passed this week maybe has some opportunities, whether you agree with the law or not, for, yeah. uh, you know, making the first step now. Yeah, there's there's tons of opportunities. So um, what Double Green does is we 
we save clients money. Number one, don't, we don't sell anything or we don't connect or help anyone with anything that doesn't save them money. And that's why we created Double Green was I was head of corporate affairs, government affairs, political, you know, crisis management in distribution, breweries, all of that for years. And sustainability was part of that. But, and I kept every year we would start doing a sustainability project and it would kick, get kicked down the road. And I started to get frustrated because I was really worried because I saw today coming. Um, I knew that sustainability, well, it was already of concern to some consumers. And I knew that more and more consumers were gonna care. And I, su suppliers already had goals. They had goals in their annual report saying, hey, we're going to reduce our carbon emissions by 20% by the year 2020. And I was, nobody was going to, was getting there. <laughs> and I was like, this is going to be a problem. Uh, but the other thing is that as temperatures continue to rise, energy prices were going to go up and it's going to have more stress on your buildings and on the roads. So as a country, that's a problem. As a supply chain, that's a problem. As a business, that's a problem. Um, but as brands, it, it was it was a problem. And I kept saying, hey, we should do this. We should do this. And we'd start and then we'd do something else, either acquisition or a crisis. And so we created Double Green because we couldn't solve the problem internally. And it makes sense. Brewers created breweries to do what they do, create great beer and do it well. Distributors to distribute efficiently, retailers to do what they do. Right. Because it's hard to carve out resources in time for something that you don't just see an immediate ROI or benefit. Yeah. So. yeah. And they were all right. You know, I worked with smart people. I worked with Ray Garen, you know, worked with Bill Hackett, worked with golf, all, you know, all these people, they were right. I would, you know, um, I mean, think about it. You've got a CSR person that comes in and does that CSR person even know this is 15 years ago, or whatever. And in a brewery, in a huge brewery, does the, does the person in marketing know brewery? And does the, do they know packaging and do they know distribution? And God forbid, should they be coming up with what the distributor should do? Right. Yeah. So what? Because we, distributors typically love when breweries <laughs> give them mandates, right? <laughs> right. Jordan, Jordan knows, that. even Jordan knows that. Oh he's yeah. A, yeah. Jordan just turned 21 this week. So he's been, <laughs> he's been out buying fireball. So, okay. No, Jordan, you just had a baby, right? Yeah. Babies baby. having babies. A baby and uh, of le legal drinking age now, so <laughs> and two dogs. <laughs> All right, this is the longest yeah. answer to what I, ever to what I do. But what what we do yeah. is, I found out Harry that it's like a blue ocean business. I was doing sustainability, but I realized we needed to connect the dots, like find the experts in sustainability. And there were experts out there, but they were selling the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. And there were CSR experts, but by the time they got onboarded in these businesses that even could figure out what they should do, they couldn't get share of mind inside of the company. And I might have yeah. even been one of those people. And then you might be like, oh, it's a Super Bowl commercial or beach cleanup. And I'm like, great, but that's not really reducing greenhouse gases. And it certainly wasn't saving anybody money. So Just maybe I, saving a turtle somewhere. And who yeah. cares about turtles? Honestly, I never <laughs> so, met one I liked. They, just get, they, get, they, they get old, that's for sure. Those damn yeah. things, they live. Why are we saving them? They live till they're 150. <laughs> they don't have any natural uh, predators except for a straw. So you know, I'm being flippant, but yes, go, go ahead. No, no, that's that's okay. I, I, I wanted to talk about it. I'm like, oh, let's talk. I think they do have predators. Um, so I went and found all the scientists, or not all of them, but experts in transportation, um, infrastructure, and life cycle analysis and said, here, I know all this, I've done ISO 14001 and all this stuff, you don't need to know about it, but in beer and logistics and said, what should we be doing in brewing and then beer distribution for sustainability? And then went back and made partners with financial people and said, where does it save the most money? Right. And then went and found and, and the solutions. And you're, and you're kind of uniquely situated because you have worked in, in those tiers and you know the challenges, you know the mindset, you know how distributors think, you know how suppliers think, and and you know the people themselves, which I imagine is a huge leg up. So you already have relationships and and connect the dots with the government and with the incentives. And then right. and, so and, the you, and you have like a pack of scientists that that uh yes. that they're I'm sure they all have like a crush on you and you've just you've great or you're always great at creating. I mean that 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 sounded terrible too, but because you are a you're a connector, Molly, I would say. 
-hmm. as long as I've known you, you are a connector of people it, to know Molly's to know everybody in, in a lot of ways. And so um, I would think you were uniquely situated to, to, to spearhead something like this. And it, right. it, but, you know, it, it aligned with my values and I love this industry. I, I love the brands and it's a really a unique chance to actually fix our infrastructure too, because I'm not blowing smoke. Um, so beer distributors are inherently green. We have been greening the beer industry for 85 years. So this doesn't give us a pass. We need to do more and we're going to do more, but through the three tier system, beer distributors have been greening brewers, beer, um, the whole industry since three tier system was created um, because we're taking all these different suppliers and putting them on one truck or two trucks and two just right. you know. consolidating orders. I mean, because, yeah, you know, these about... breweries, they, if you let them have their way, they would all have their own dedicated distribution network, which kind of AB almost uh, achieved on its own. But that's where they naturally would have gone, just like Pepsi and Coke and non out did for years. Yeah. That's a lot more trucks on the road. It's fewer, fewer cases in the, in the truck. And so then what distributors did when they invested in routing, which was really expensive. So all that routing technology, now you're putting more cases in the truck, all of that. Okay. They're doing it for efficiency. They're doing it to save money. Fine. It's reducing greenhouse gases. It's reducing trucks on the road. It's reducing fuel. That's all great for the environment, for the planet. We like to make profits while we pass gases. Isn't that right, Jordan? <laughs> and I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> so, so let's stop. Let's make profit without passing so much gas. I mean, right, Biscuit? Let's start with you, by the way. Change your dog food up. Okay, so we're <laughs> so you're right. Consolidating orders and distributors have had the margins and the profitability to invest in things like compressed natural gas and, and lighting and where other distributors, grocery distributors, they only work off one, 2% margin. Well, they can't invest in it ahead of time. Beer guys can. And I think that's a good point. Well, and also beer distributors have been meeting with their state legislators and their federal legislators for 75 years, 85 right. years. And so they're also doing a really good job of, we have another great job of communicating. Here's what's going on with our infrastructure. Here's what's going on with our community. And now we can also say, hey, we've been reducing this much greenhouse gases. And now we've got 30%, you asked the Inflation Reduction Act. Well, yeah. what should what should all of our members do? You yeah. want you want you need a new roof? You want 30% of it paid for? It's there. Go grab it. And right. you're, your you paid your taxes all your life. You should get yeah. some of it back. Well, that's just the federal. In a lot of states, you've got a state and a utility rebate. You know, there's free money there. Take it. Take it. Mm. Get your roof paid for. Put solar on and it pays for itself. Like your energy prices used to go up like 3% a year and the utility companies are really good. We're going to, we can partner with them too. This is not about shaming any business. This is about taking care of your self-interest and making sure your costs go down this year and every year after it, making your business more resilient and adapting to the current climate, which is getting hotter every year, longer summers and more extreme weather events. It's right. still protecting your business, but it's going to make it could give our industry a real competitive advantage. Because, you know, you know I've been reading for, for a couple of years now that big retailers like Walmart, especially, they're going to, you know, they're going to start asking and mandating that whatever comes into their stores has a, you know, a climate report card and that it's, uh, that everybody's doing their fair share. Um, Did it so that, you know, getting... send out a survey last year to a bunch of distributors asking them what they were doing? I think so. One of them, Kroger, or, but yeah, I mean, so, I mean, uh, it's all coming down the pike and it might as well be prepared. Walmart um, has a life. Uh, there's a whole buildings at ASU's graduate school of sustainability called Walmart life cycle analysis. So right. I'm pretty sure that they have a good handle on what they're the ones with the gigaton reduction. Um, yeah. Right. Well, since you've been meeting with distributors, Molly, um, have you found that they either have a, what have you found more of? They have a head start on this or they're at square one 
and so, have really I mean, made no progress. So I found that, I mean, distributors are such great community leaders. Like they do all the right things that their community cares about. And, all, you know, they, they're such good corporate citizens. Um, I've found that, you know, some of them don't like, you don't wave like the big, like environmental flag, you know, <laughs> like, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but there's such good people. They want to take care of their community, their employees and their suppliers, like just no question. And they're really great, efficient warehouses. All those things I told you, like they, we, I would stack up the beer distributors against other distribution and other logistics as that's why this environmental, this scorecard, this greenhouse gas calculator that we do per case mm -hmm. is amazing. And all they have to do is use it and they can't go wrong. They can't break it. There's nothing, there's no, not a good or a bad, just use it because they're going to come out as good. And again, long answer, they might not think they're green, but they're green. And almost all of them have LED. They haven't, their whole building is not LED because they might've done it once. So they did it a couple of years ago and there's still some light bulbs that they could replace. Right. A lot of them have the high volume fans, which make them more energy efficient. And they have really nice warehouses. I, the answer is all of them could save another 20% by doing something. Right. Um, and they're, they're not, they don't see themselves as green. And I don't think anyone would know that they're green, but all of them today, I could walk into any one of them and legitimately write up a report, put it on their website and quantify that they are a greener logistics operation than almost any basic logistics operator. Wow. That and, and so talk about the the calculator. And this is something you've done in conjunction with the National Beer Wholesalers Association. I'm yeah. sorry, the National Beer and Beverage Wholesalers Association. Right. Boom shakalaka. Look at this old man getting things right for a change. Oh, oh, Jordan, and none of the hardly any of them have done solar. Less than 20% have done solar, which all of them, these are big square warehouses. Almost all a huge percentage of them could save money overnight take money from the federal government and, and they have the money for it. Um, yeah. so there's a huge opportunity for that. Sorry, Harry. Yeah. Um, the, the calculator. Yeah. What was the question on it? Yeah. The, so tell, tell us about what you're doing with MBWA and like, if you're, let's say I'm a beer distributor, what do, where, where do I go to get first steps to, to learn how I can be greener? Because this podcast is, you remember the, the tagline is to make all your dreams come true. Yeah, and so are doing that? Are we, uh, am, am I a are you have such great um speakers on I hope this is no oh, are you kidding you're fantastic to like um how many of your suppliers have come on and talked about sustainability any of them none um, I don't think so Jordan have we I mean it's people weave it into the conversation sometimes yeah. but you know well, it, yeah you know it's we clean beaches you know it's that's great you know we want people to clean beaches right biscuit <laughs> but uh this is well, like, hell yeah. yes, I'll eat anything on a beach. I don't care how long it's been dead. The, so the calculator and the roadmap are on NBW's website. Mm -hmm. And you just log on there. You're going to get the roadmap. And through the roadmap, you're going to see return on investments. You're going to see the exact cost that other distributors have deployed solutions, what it cost them, their what their return on investment was, where they were located. You're going to see all different examples. And then you can also see the calculator. And the calculator allows you to choose what state you're in. So you'll get your exact science-based metrics that you can pass along. So when your uh, suppliers ask you what you're doing, you can actually quantify here. Here's the impact of our greenhouse gases, which is um, save, it's going to save everybody tons of time and tons of money. What are there some of the easy things like, like we, you mentioned the inflation reduction act, you know, I, I was kind of just reading over the news on it and I'm like, well, shit, I should have waited to buy a Tesla because it's practically free now, the money they're giving away. And I bought mine three years ago, paid full price like a dumbass. And I should have, well, I should have run up college debt at ITT Technical Institute as well. Because well, You didn't pay for any fuel for the last three years. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but electricity does cost money, but you're right. It's about eight bucks to fill up my tank. Uh, c compared to you know a hundred. <laughs> well, so that's guys. why that's why our members should reduce the kilowatts in their warehouse through making sure that they're all LED, making their HVAC as efficient as possible. Call me; we'll give you a business case for anything. 
use the roadmap, use the toolkit efficiency and sustainability roadmap that MBWA um, gave you. Sign up for the convention. So we're gonna have um, MBWA's convention in, in, is it October October in Chicago? Yeah. Um, we'll have a green seminar there and download the calculator. All you have to do is put in some of your vendor information, waste recycling, um, your utility bills. Yeah. And the fact that, so we've, I can also help people with, you want to, I think it's your three, five year, you know, 10 year sort of CapEx planning because energy prices keep going up because it's getting hotter. I mean, I bet you a lot of the listeners on here have been like, man, I had to repave my parking lot. I had to put on a new roof. You know, they had to do things that they used to get away with doing. They're doing them more frequently. And that's because of the extreme weather. And now at least you can start planning for this better. And if you're doing some of these sustainability solutions, you're going to, you're going to make sure that your assets last longer like they used to and reduce your costs right. and, and get the government to help pay for it. Get, take right. advantage of these incentives. Um, but the other thing is if you want, if you're going to be moving to electrification, which I think I, I believe that our members will start doing in a number of years and we can help them plan for that and make sure that you're doing it at the right time, not too early, not too late. So you're, cause there's a cost of inaction. A lot of people want to wait. Well, I want to wait and see you're losing money doing that a lot of times. Right. You, it's kind of, you don't want to be on the bleeding edge, but you oh, want to be on the leading edge yeah. to, to quote every college professor and dad. And make sure no. that you get the competitive advantage and that you're not spending too much on energy bills. I mean, if you're th- even thinking about getting a new roof on your warehouse, now would be the time because yeah, the government pay for 30% of it, put, put solar panels on it. Because if you're putting solar panels on it, then you're also able to charge your future, you know, you're probably your material handling equipment is probably now electric. You're going to electrify your fleet. I mean, I bet you a, it makes sense for a lot of people to move their vans to electric this coming year or the next. Definitely, year. I would think so too, Molly. Because and and even at some point, route trucks when the tech, when the batteries catch up, but because they're only out for the day, um, these trucks do have downtime at night, yeah. and um, that's a perfect opportunity. If, especially if you have solar panels to so charge those bitches up at night and, uh, and then, uh, you know, get away with a, a full day of driving. I think you're right. I think vans are ready. Let's do it with vans. Let's go. As the kids and say. Take the money, take the money, 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 take the money, the, take the money I'm, from the government and then take the money from the utility company. And we're not being selfish. You are, you're helping everyone. This, we can help the infrastructure, the roads, the, the, take the, pressure off the utility grid because our infrastructure in the United States right now can't, the utility grid can't take the demand. So we're right. helping. We're like great Americans. We yeah. are the infrastructure of the United States. Right. I mean, Molly, my car, I've said this, my, my Tesla tells me don't charge right now. The grid right. is taxed. And right. I'm like, don't tell me what to do robot. <laughs> it's like, I'm not a robot. You're a robot. And it's asking me if I'm a robot. I'm like, no, right, right, right. Dumbass car you know tells you, me I'm driving too fast. Tells me I follow people too much. How do you know? How Wait, you who know? are you following? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you you looked at like Biscuit, like she was yeah. going to tell you. Well, because Biscuit rides with me, so I don't want her telling things out of school. <laughs> you know what you were talking about the solar panels, so charging at night. The other thing in the future, so talking with my scientists that are just they were in Boulder and and uh, Santa Barbara. There were all these cool um, councils going on about solar and batteries because we need the next jump in batteries from lithium blah 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 um but in the future we might be able to take all the batteries from our electric trucks and charge our buildings vice versa there's all this cool stuff coming and we really i'm not being too rah 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 the the compound impact of what we can do just through our self-interest just of reducing our kilowatts and saving money and taking money from the government and doing it to to save your own money in your business, make your business more resilient and use the calculator to communicate that back, we can then shape what's going to happen for logistics and for our industry and make our beer greener. And it might then, consumers might drink more beer because of that. And we can that. then 
we can then direct the government because we're because we've got NBWA and say, hey, look at what we've done. Instead of in the future, God forbid, taxation on logistics, maybe they should work with us to put some of that trillion dollars of the infrastructure bill that happened last year. That's not this year's bill. Last year, put that those charging stations next to our, you know, our buildings. Yeah, I remember. Uh, never mind. I was going to tell an anecdote. But I forgot. I forgot it. Jordan, Jordan what, his head. And I was like, I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be very appropriate. And oh, okay. <laughs> oh shit. I'm joking. Um, I was going to ask Molly, are there any um standout distributor partners you'd like to call out that um you know you've worked with that have made strides? I know you partnered with Crescent Crown recently. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I was going to say them and then I wondered if it was too self-serving because I'm working with them so much. Um, and that comes from, and the interesting thing with that is like, that's driven by like the VP of finance is the one who got behind it so much. And he got behind it because he's, he saw the, the dollars and it's, it's always so much fun to work with really smart partners that, that get it right. Cause they make use, they make me smarter. I'm, I've been doing some work with Columbia um been doing stuff you've got manhattan beverage is always always leading and always trying stuff people are doing different stuff andrews um saratoga eagle you've got jj you've got kit um o and w and that's a good mix a good mix yeah. of big and small and um yeah because uh, you don't even if you're a small operation you can do some things that still have an roi yeah um it's what I from what I read well gosh molly thank you so much for spending this time with us this <laughs> afternoon Thank and uh, um, how, how how are things in uh, where you're in Wyoming? I think you're yeah. in Jackson. Yeah, we just had the primary this week. How nice! I mean, how nice! I just Beautiful. you're right there, right on the edge of the park, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Has the flooding affected uh, where you're at? No, the... it it was it really was contained to the park. Well, good. Well. And I, I hope to see it at uh, at the Beer Summit, January 8, 2023. Don't miss it. It'll be at the Breakers Hotel. I don't, you might have heard of it. It's in Palm Beach, uh, Florida. That is the east coast of Palm Beach, just north of Miami and on the Atlantic Ocean. We will be there from January 8th through the 12th. We have the Wine of Spirit Summit right after it, but believe it or not, it will be freezing cold by then where you are probably. So get out of the cold and into the bowl. Right, Jordan? Or that's not our, what's our tag? I, I love these taglines. Out of the snow and into the no. Harry. <laughs> okay, that's right. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, trademark, TM. Put oh, TM oh, after Harry. that. Do you have your speakers already? When do you announce your speakers? We have a, some of them uh, lined up, but uh, we'll okay, probably be announcing it. one or two here uh well it's already thursday probably early next week yeah and uh we like to wait till we have like three speakers you know three slots set up and then uh before we announce but it should be a good one it's our 20th anniversary molly riley you were there at the very first and i was there last year and you were there last year as well yeah molly molly helped me actually stuff uh stuff name tags at the very first one i appreciate (laughs) you know that's right in virginia and richmond and uh wow 20 years molly you know what? Thanks for hanging in there. Appreciate you. This is so, great. This we're, is great. we're, we're kind of the, we're kind of the old war horses of the industry. You know, I remember when Jordan was hired. My first week was at a summit. Yeah. Which and... summit was that? I, I remember when you walked in there and the, all the, your colleagues were all like, there's Jordan. Like <laughs> yeah. it was, um, it was at the Phoenician in, um, oh, Arizona. Yeah. In Arizona. yeah. It's been about eight years, huh, Jordan? 2014, so. Harry, you do a good job of, you must do a good job of mentoring. I I think that the, the I, I, I'm like one of those parents that throws a baby in the pool, teach them to swim, that kind of, you know, so I wouldn't say I did a good job. I just, uh, I did a job and that, and that they all luckily are self-starters who know how to, how to solve problems. <laughs> but uh, it has been a great ride. I tell you, it's a, uh, no funner business even still and actually i think it's getting funner now because we have a lot of young people entrepreneurs coming in with rtds and just very entrepreneurial again it feels like craft beer 10 years ago or 12 15 years ago let's say 
Well, yeah, so well, speaking of that, since NBW is National Beer and Beverage Wholesalers, and you've got the three different publications. So is this publication now? I mean, I never know. I keep using brewers, beer, brewers. Should I? Yeah. Are we supposed, what's, is it supposed to be beverage? <laughs> like, and I well, say, like, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of them are changing their names. Like, most of yeah. course, it's most of course beverage company. Um, and I, we try to watch ourselves in our copy writing now of just, you know, calling out brewer and just saying, well, like a beverage company or just <laughs> company sometimes, you know? So yeah. I, I try not to use the term brewer all that much anymore for these big companies. But supplier feels cold. It always feels like I'm pushing them away, you know? And, and also it doesn't yeah. make sense because, you know, we, we have a new editor that just started Bianca and she's, she's yeah. really great. She comes from the legal world and, you know, we keep saying supplier, supplier, and supplier, people equate that with vendor. Suppliers, it's a terrible word, but it's what we're, it's what we got, but it's, it's not very descriptive. I, you know, <laughs> I, you know they should... are you going to change the name of your, your business? Well, daily? so, so your we have, uh, we have, daily? no, but we, we have, uh, we have craft business daily, which covers craft beer, yeah. but doesn't have the word beer in it. So it, it's, it, you know, craft, craft uh, business daily is really kind of turned into, in essence, craft beverage daily in a lot of ways. So it's, it's, it's just a high end newsletter of high end beverages. And uh, uh, so we didn't really need to change the name. We just flowed with the focus. I like that flowed. With, we just flowed with the focus. Yeah. I was, I was trying huh. to call it. Hey, I Jordan. Write that down. Flowed with Here. the focus. I got it. We're going to put that, that in the, the That might be the, the summit theme. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, or it could be star studded because, uh, <laughs> yeah, we got some celebrities coming. And when I really? say celebrities, I'm not talking about D list. I'm talking about full on C list celebrities. So, <laughs> so do, you know, watch your calendar. Watch Does the rock have a beverage. Oh, he, oh yeah. yeah Zoa. He has a few. He has Terramana, oh. Tequila, Zoa. Oh yeah. yeah. What about the dude um from I said C list, Molly. Okay. <laughs> He's A plus list, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't you shouldn't guess because it's gonna be a surprise and I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Somebody who came up to me at your conference and said I have to talk to you about something. And I, I was like, oh, and then I said, and he's like, no, and I'm like, oh, and no, and I just <laughs> oh he <laughs> welcome welcome to shoemaker publishing you, you can work here <laughs> oh boy yeah okay well um Thank listen you. i want you to have a good weekend i want you to go sailing i want you to spend some time with your dog i want you to be happy Thank you. these are my wants and th th they don't have anything to do with what you want it's what i want for you <laughs> we'll cut that in post jordan get edited it doesn't just get it, it, it's supposed to get edited oh. but i end up just leaving a lot of stuff in <laughs> um when does it get posted like next week or monday okay cool and we'll link to it and we'll put socials out so i don't know if you're on the social media have you heard of this molly social media i have but i think my facebook got hacked my business double greens business facebook got just got hacked a bunch of times so i can't i can't get in like my personal account that's associated with the business account got hacked so i can't control it oh, i should probably launch a new business account maybe before you launch this i don't know um or but just, you've got an instagram and yeah i need somebody I to make that stuff too oh can you cut this out but can you do you guys yeah. have any recommendations yeah um for recommendations for what so I need to manage our social media. Oh, no. I can't do all of that in, in our job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you ought to ask Pete Marino's son is starting like a marketing agency. Oh, in that's a great idea. He might. I'm sure he would have props on that. It's called Street, Street Fighter Marketing. Sweet. Well, good. Well, thanks for being on, Molly. It's always great to okay. talk to you anyway. And uh, we'll see yes. you in uh, January. If, oh, we'll see you in we'll NBWA. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Bye-bye.